Okay, let's look at chapter 9. We'll start with problem number 4. And in this case, we're looking to buy a machine, and this machine is not going to increase production. It's just going to make things more efficient, so it's going to save us operating costs. We want to know, should we buy it? Step number one, let's set to estimate the cash flows. Well, we want to find the initial cash flow. Then we want to find the intermediate cash flows. This is a machine that will last us 10 years. So the intermediate cash flows are years 1 through 9. The terminal cash flow is the cash flow in year 10. So it's going to cost us $2 million to have the thing purchased and installed. We get that from part A. Part B, the engineering department spent. I don't care how much. Past tense, sunk cost. Part C, portions of the plant floor were redesigned. Past tense, sunk cost. I don't care about it. So my intermediate, uh, my initial cash flow is minus $2 million. Let's look at those intermediate cash flows. The operating cash flows are going to be generated or the revenue. There's no change in revenue, so I put a zero minus the cost, but the costs are reduced. So I'm saving here $400,000. So this is a positive $400,000. Minus my depreciation. Depreciation is going to be always straight line. $2 million is the cost installed. It's depreciated down to $100,000 salvage value over 10 years. So my depreciation is $190,000. Now that I take that out, I pay my taxes at 35% rate. And then I add back my depreciation. So my intermediate operating cash flows are 326500 So by doing this, I'm saving myself 326 every year, 3265 every year for 10 years. Now what happens in that last year? Well, we sell the thing for scrap, so we get $100,000. And it was sold at book value. So there's no tax event on that hundred thousand. So that is four twenty-six five hundred. We can stop at this point and do the internal rate of return if we would like to. And all we have to do is say this is cash flow. This is cash flow zero. This is cash flow one. It happens nine times. So remember, go back to page one eighty three if you need to clear your cash registers. Uh, Cash flow zero is minus two million. Cash flow one, three twenty-six five hundred. It happens nine times. Cash flow two is four twenty-six five hundred. It happens once. And now you can compute the internal rate of return. Internal rate of return is equal to uh, wrote the number down here somewhere. Ten point five zero eight percent. But I don't know if I should accept this project yet because I don't know the weighted average cost of capital. So my next step is find the weighted average cost of capital, which is equal to the percent of equity. This is always going to be given to me. It says that it's 70% equity times my cost of equity. Now i got to figure that out. So my cost of equity, let me do that over here. Cost of equity. And I look down in part H, and I see that this is going to be a constant growth uh, stock. So next year's dividend, great, I don't have to do any extra work. Next year's dividend is $1.50 over price of 20. So D1 over P0 plus the growth rate of 4%. Remember this just rearranges the equation P0 equals D1 over K minus G. Remember that K is actually cost of equity. So that's back from chapter 7. So I know my cost of equity is equal to 11.5%. Then I add here, so this is the weight of equity times the cost of equity plus the weight of debt, which is 30% times the cost of debt. So now I have to go to Chapter 6 and find yield to maturity. It's a 20-year semi-annual pay. So 20 periods, the payment is... 5% coupon, so 5% of a thousand is fifty dollars divided by divided by two is twenty-five. Future value is equal to a uh, thousand, one thousand. Present value minus 
1010. Plug all this in and it will give me an interest rate of 2.43 excuse me 62 percent so that's my yield that's not my yield maturity that's a semi-annual yield so I'll multiply by 2 um, and I would put in here 0 0.048725 now there's a little rounding issues here you, you can get more decimal places on your calculator I did this straight out of Excel, so that's where the rounding issues come from. Multiply by 1 minus my tax rate. This gives me a weight average cost of capital of exactly 9%. So now to find my net present value, I put in the same cash flows that I put in here and put in the cost of 9%. And it comes out to be 137,593.53. I accept the project because the net present value is positive and because the internal rate of return is greater than the weighted average cost of capital. Okay, so let's look at question number five. Question number five, we have the same type of setup. I want to know if I should do this project or not. And here I want to talk about cannibalization. That means I'm selling a product, but I'm getting some of my existing customers. I don't really want to count these guys. But in, chapter, in, in question number five, the marketing guys or the, the finance guys, whoever did this, are, they're not thinking about that. Uh, they won't think about number six. They'll think about number five. So... Uh, the initial cash flow, well it's going to cost us $25 million to get the equipment that we need, so minus $25 million. So 5 and 6 are tied together, but remember that as you work through this. Networking capital will increase by a million, so an increase of working capital means the money you're putting in, that's negative. So my initial cash flow here is minus $26 million. I'm going to need my cash flows for the intermediate years. And this is a 10 year uh, project, so that's cash flows 1 through 9. And then my terminal cash flows in year 10. So my operating cash flows, and I get these every year, 1 through 10, is going to be my revenues, $8 million. And here's where we have something different. Marketing tells us that 10% of the buyers are going to come from people already drinking Caspian Sea. They just want to switch to the diet. So I'm looking for my intermediate cash flows. I'm looking for the change in the cash flows. I'm assuming here the diet drink is going to cost the same as the regular drink. I'm assuming the cost to produce the diet drink is the same as the regular drink. We want to make those assumptions to make this a little bit easier. Real life, of course, you'd have to make those adjustments. But remember, that's, that's what we're thinking about here. So this $8 million is not new money to me because 10% came from existing customers. So the new money, that's what I'm looking for. Multiply that by 0.9. 9% comes from you. So now I want to subtract out my cost. $2 million in cost. Well, now that I have this new diet drink, I'm selling 10% less of my regular drink because I had those customers switch. So really my costs are not $2 million. They haven't increased by that. Just looking at the whole firm, they've only increased by 90% of that. I need to find depreciation. Depreciation is um, when I have a $25 million machine. And it's going to be depreciated over 10 years to a book value of $2 million. Over 10 years. So that is $2,300,000. I don't make any adjustments for the depreciation because, I mean, I'm buying the machine, I'm taking the depreciation, whether it's 90% new customers or 100% new customers. Times 1 minus the tax rate was still 40% in this problem. Uh, 
plus add back that depreciation of 2,300,000. This gives me my operating cash flows of 4,160,000. So 4,160,000. In year 10, I get that 4,160,000 as well. Um, but what else do I get? It says that the networking capital comes back to me. So I get that million dollars. Networking capital is just money. I think of it as money I put into the machine to make it work. Now I'm selling the machine. I take the money back out. I also sell the machine for its salvage value of two million. There's no tax consequence to selling at that book value. So seven million one hundred and sixty thousand. Okay. So to get the net present value, I enter cash flows as follows. This is cash flow zero. Cash flow one happens nine times. Cash flow two happens once. The internal, I mean the weight average cost of capital, I don't have to figure out, it's given to me at 12%. So I put in 12% for that. Come up with a minus 1,529,152. Point forty-nine. I don't do the project. If I did it, I would destroy value. Or I would destroy $1.5 million worth of value of the firm. Find my internal rate of return uh, by putting in the same cash flows. Cash flow of zero, cash flow of one happens nine times, cash flow of two happens once. Solve for internal rate of return 10.610%. It's less than my weight average cost of capital 12%. So I know I shouldn't do the project. I just don't know precisely how bad it is. Okay, question number six. I want to look at what if people, the people didn't make an adjustment for this. What if uh, the CFO just forgot and didn't do this properly? What would happen? You wouldn't have multiplied by 0.9 in either one of these spots. So this cash flow would have been uh, higher. So in this case, he would have thought he was getting cash flow of 4520000 when he wasn't. He was really getting 4.1. So this would change four million five twenty. So would that. So this would change as well to seven million five hundred twenty thousand. Use the same weight average cost of capital. You give it a net present value of five hundred four thousand nine twenty seven eighty, and an internal rate of return of twelve point four five. 3%. He would say, look, I beat, the, I beat the weight average cost of capital. I should do the project. I'll increase the value of the firm by $504,000, but because he didn't adjust for cannibalization, really would have destroyed wealth. Right, so that's uh, five, four, five, and six.